Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. My name is Dominic and I'm the host of the Android Factory. Last episode we went ahead and completed some animations here. So now when we select a particular character from the list, we get this nice animation moving to the details and then in the reverse we get this, basically the reverse of that animation, a nice little window sliding kind of feel. So if you missed that, I'll link a card in the top right so you could check that out. And in today's episode we're gonna talk about deep linking. Deep linking is quite helpful inside Android applications. They allow you to inject the user into a particular location in your app with a little bit of ease. So for instance, we could deep link someone into a particular character details page. And the most common use case of this is when you receive a push notification, you kind of navigate the user to where they should be inside your app. But it is also possible they do get external links or they click on some kind of branded link that does push you into the application and bring you to a specific point here. So let's go ahead and dive right into it so we can jump the user to this details page. Checking out our nav graph here, the Jetpack Navigation Library makes it quite easy to add in this feature. So we can see here inside of our character detail fragment declaration, we have one argument defined here, a character ID that is of type integer and we have a default value here. Now when we actually drill into the fragment itself, we again have our safe args here, which allows us to fetch the arguments passed into this fragment. And then down here we can make use when we're telling the view model to refresh a particular character, we can make use of the character ID that is passed in through the bundle, through this whole library that we've been using, this whole Jetpack navigation system. But what we can do here is we can actually define a uh, deep link attribute inside of this fragment and it will allow us to essentially inject the information that this fragment needs to start. And we can do so by adding in the app URI field here and coming up with some kind of a schema. So for now, let's just make, let's just make believe that this actually is part of, uh, I guess, your implementation or, or part of your company's idea and you've been given instructions to you know, accept a particular schema, a particular URL, a particular link that you want the app to open when they click that. So we could just very easily say HTTPS uh, simple morty.com slash character slash, uh, you know, then it would be something like five or something like 124 and essentially this number here that comes after the last character slash is what we need to parse and pass in as this argument here for the character ID. So what we can do is we can copy the name of this and instead of an actual number there, we can have our little curly brackets and we can paste in the little argument name right there. And this will now basically act as a placeholder. So whether this URL ends in slash four, slash 124, whatever it is, the library will now parse that as the character ID. It will start this fragment with the proper backstack, having the character ID set properly for us. So the only other thing that we need to do at this point is go into the manifest file and actually add this in under our, I will do it above, but within our application tag here, we need to, oh, I apologize, it actually has to be within the activity that has the nav graph. And so you can go ahead and add a little nav graph tab or attribute here, an Android value. We're just going to very easily reference the nav graph that we've built. And this will go ahead and actually translate what we've done so far, all of these other little deep link tags, because you can add them into any fragment that you've defined in this nav graph. It will go ahead and compile this into a particular intent filter, into a particular schema that Android can understand as a system. So. If we go ahead and run the app here, we'll see that nothing has changed here, right? The application still functions as normal, moving a little slower, but if we click on somebody, they move into this detail screen and navigation works back and everything's all good. However, if we go ahead and kill this application, now we can make use of the deep linking. So I'm gonna go ahead and just start a random text message here to one, two, three, four, five, six. And then in here, we can go ahead and basically paste the URL that we've been, uh, that we told the app that it can handle. So we're gonna go ahead and just paste that in here. And then we'll do character number 16. And so the idea here is obviously this is not going to go anywhere. 
uh, it's just an emulator, but the idea is that this is a URL, this is a link that the app knows how to handle. So if the user comes across this somewhere outside of the app, you can pull them into the app and specifically into the character details page, loading in character 16. So if we go ahead and click on it, we'll go ahead and see this little system window that pops up saying, hey, there are multiple apps that can basically handle this particular link, right? That follows this schema, HTTPS, simplemorty.com, character, etc. So we can click on our app and then we can click on set to always open or just once. For right now, I'm just gonna click just once and then the application will start and we will be hoisted into the character details page with the Amish cyborg who has been, um, I guess, fetched. And when we go back, we have the back stack here. We have the proper navigation here. Now it didn't necessarily know, okay, we needed to be down here uh, this far in the list, but that is not really the point of the deep linking. Deep linking is more so just to get you into the application uh, and something like that is a little bit more of a advanced use case there. So in order to show that this works differently, let's now do uh, character 166, which I'm going to hope that this um, has 166 characters. I think it does. But if we go ahead and click on this, we again will get the same little dialog here. But if we click just once, we'll go ahead and launch ourselves into the application. And we do make our way into the application here and we have the correct character loaded in. If we click backwards, we do of course get that back navigation and we are in the proper hierarchy within the application. And so this is a very simple use case here, but this just goes to show how simple it is to offer deep links when you follow the structure. There was absolutely no code changes. Every, the only thing we needed to do here was update this little deep link option and then add it to our manifest here, which now that we've done this, we're not gonna to have to do it again. So basically anytime you wanna add a deep link to a particular fragment or to a particular destination, it's just going to require the proper structure, the proper definition of the URL and the little placeholder here. And let's say we had a couple other arguments here, like, I don't know, one more argument. We could of course have again slash and then, you know, argument two or whatever the name of that other argument would be. And the system will go ahead and pull out the different variables along the way, as long as the path is properly formatted and inject those values into the arguments that are then passed into the fragment. And then the fragment just takes care of the rest. So there you have it. Deep linking in Jetpack navigation is pretty simple. If you made it this far in the video, I'd really appreciate a like. If you notice you are not subscribed and you did enjoy the content, please do consider subscribing and I'll catch you in the next one. Thanks.